previously on Salty Lass. I think they're a bit crispy. The, we're going to go to, um, we're going to get across the lighthouse and we're going to go to Corset Bay. Okay. Um, two reasons. Mainly because light, we haven't got that much light. Okay. Um, well, because it's six, it'll be six o'clock. It's four o'clock now. Five. We'll just about get to the top of um, uh, the mouth of Lock Swing. Of Lock Swing. By six. By six. Right. Even with these um, speeds of six point four knots. Okay. Um, and then gear. There's another two hours. There's another two hours. So we're talking. Four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, we're going to be right on the cusp. That doesn't bother me too much about gear because it is a lit entrance. I understand. But if we're going to Carsick, we're going to Carsick. Hmm. And yeah, we'll check it with binoculars so if there's four or five yachts in there, we'll have to keep going. But we'll see what it's like when we get round this lighthouse. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got to get past the lighthouse in my opinion. Yeah, it's just I can see at least two sets of boats inside of us. Yeah. But like you, my big concern is tomorrow. My big concern is tomorrow, I will be I will be honest. With especially with that four seven it said. Yeah. I know it said it was gonna be near Tyree, but Tyree's not really that far away. I feel quite pleased with this sail though. Good. But the lighthouse is starting to come out on the port side now. Once we're past it, we're clear of all hazards. Just a little bit further, but yes. It's that dip over there. It's that dip over there. That was this, quick. This is what I mean. We've just literally passed these and we'd have to be running for it now. It's just a lot to... Cause well, a there's lot a boat in the anchorage, I think, or maybe a telegraph pole. It's hard to tell. I'm trying to... Careful, Ben. That's a telegraph pole. That's a telegraph pole. That's a power line sign. Something white over there, but I don't, I don't know what that is. It looks like it might be a small boat. The problem is with it. That wind is straight into it, or very close to being into it. It is, that's what I mean. Wind is more into it than we thought. I think, I feel, even though it's going to be dark getting in, I think we're going on. Okay. Well, we're clipping along at such a rate of knots that uh, we seem to have missed our opportunity. Carsick Bay's on our beam. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a roaring person at seven knots. Six and a half now, don't get the oh. notes up. But the big, biggest problem though is um, the wind is a beam of us and that means that the wind is going to be going straight in to Carsick Bay at this moment in time. So rather than being sheltered from the wind... It's going to be quite it, the opposite. It's going to be quite the opposite. It's actually going to be a lee shore. And right, I'm not well. that keen on these shores at the moment. I've got enough issues to worry about. That's Karsig Bay out then. Onward. Yeah, it's just... Uh, we might make gear. It would be fairly late, around about sunset. Or we can always go back up to Tavelik. I don't see it miles up the lock, but you'd have the wind more or less behind you. We would. So I've got to make these decisions because uh, that's the thing about me being on the helm. I'm the one who makes the decisions. <laughs> Lucky old you. I know. I'd love to say this is hours later, but it's not. We're it's about ten minutes later. <laughs> it's ten minutes later. And the wind has just died, just like that. Boom. Yeah. And um, whereas before we were clipping along at seven knots, we're now down to 4.3 knots. A pedestrian plod. <laughs> just feel that way. Usually, Beverly and I are quite happy at 4.3 knots. knots. <laughs> and you've been doing seven cracking on eight. 
vehicle so slow. Well, this puts, this puts gear out of range for the day. It does, and that's just it. It's just sort of like... If we'd kept up the six knots, we would have been in gear by roughly sunset. Yeah, which is okay. I don't mind. But the thing is, now we're doing 4.7, and we're not going to make it. So, I think we will be going that way. But I'm still worried about the wind direction. Well, that'll be good for going up Loch Swain. You'll have no trouble getting up it. Once you're in the fairy isles and in behind those trees. Yeah, that's true. <sighs> it's just a lot of things to juggle when you're sailing. Well, put it like this. This time it's your turn to anchor up there. No, that's true. But... I've done it twice now. <laughs> but we know it's good holding. That is true. And we could easily... It... It... There's a... As I say, there's a 4-7 tomorrow. Predicted. <coughs> Predicted. We could easily stay there. Yeah. But my only concern is if we do stay too long, um, the south going tide is going to be too late. Yeah. You know, because every time you move on, the south going tide starts at half an hour later. And you've only got so much light. Mm. So it's just a lot to um, think about. It's certainly not an easy. When you're on an adventure, you can't plan as well. Well, you know very well that we can't plan. <laughs> well, we've said, before, we've said before at the start. We've said, before, <coughs> we've said before at the start of one of our videos, if it goes to plan, it's a trip. It's not an adventure. Yeah, trust me on this. <laughs> Today's turning out a bit adventurous. Definitely. Well. We're in at Carsick Bay after the biggest a load of prevaricating from me I have done for a long time. We were going at 7.2 knots and I'm like, I'm not going in there. What's the point? I can get to gear in plenty of time and it'll be light. Then, literally 10 minutes later, the wind just uh, dissipated. And I'm thinking, where can I go? What anchorages can I go to? Which ones are going to be good? Um, and the wind is supposed to be coming from the south. So I'm looking for anchorages which will be, um, you know, protected from the south. So, and the, there wasn't that many that I need could go to and still be in in the light so I decided right okay I'm gonna go to Karsik and then when I got into Karsik it was like oh this is shall I anchor here blah blah oh I have to be honest my head is spinning there was just so many variables and the paralysis, paralysis by analysis basically yes oh and um you know i'm here um but i think what we need to do tomorrow is even though we're going to have a foul tide against us i think um because of the light issue as well i think we'll just have to go out on a, a foul tide and um hopefully the four seven it's supposed to be a bit further north of us but <laughs> is that a technical sailing term? <laughs> oh, it is a technical sailing term. It's I'm, called. I'm doing a technical. Um... Bev, Bev, on the other hand, is doing a technical tea. <laughs> so technical I'm in... cooking term called dinner. Oh, thank goodness for small mercies. Well, meanwhile, Madame Le Panic is upstairs, um, bearing her soul to the camera. As she uh, so ably hinted, I'm down here getting dinner ready, which I'm glad to say should be in our friend here. And uh, it's just going to be a nice curry, or at least, or at least we hope it's going to be a nice curry. <laughs> now that we are facing a northerly exposed anchorage, my trust in the perversity of the world is that the winds will swing round to the north and we get hammered, but that's just me. So hopefully 
the winds will come from the south. Even better, we might get no winds at all overnight. We might have a very peaceful night. We'll just have to see what comes because, to be honest, the forecast today has been so much complete and utter rubbish that I think you might as well just make it up as you go along. Perhaps we could start a, uh, a forecasting game where I set a dice, you know, rain, showers, whatever, and you just throw them each day and that's your forecast. By the way, I'm just going to point out that the rice in here is set at an angle. <laughs> Look at it. I can see it. Because we've been on attack, this rice is actually set at an angle. <laughs> right, let's get some curry into this. Oh, God. After a day of sailing, a good knot is what you need. <laughs> <laughs> Beverly and I had uh, a very quiet night here uh, at Carsick Bay. Uh, the reported winds that we were supposed to be getting just did not turn up. Um, but I do think this particular anchorage where we are, um, luckily there are different places you can go depending on what wind direction it is. But from a, I think a northwest kind of direction, um, where we are now would definitely be very open. Well, we're very glad that we have a non-floating anchor line because it seems that the stern of the boat is right over the anchor. The anchor ball is right behind me and I can see the trip line going down, lying on the seabed, curling around a couple of times the seabed and then going under the boat. So it means that when we come to pick the anchor up, I'm going to have to go that way first, come round and come back because the anchor's right underneath us at this point. Um, we did use floating line once before because we were told floating line doesn't go under the boat. That's not true. If the boat goes over the floating line, it goes under the boat. We know. Um, this method here where we've got the heavy shackles to hold the line down below our keel depth seems to be working for us, so we're going to stick with it. and I are sailing along at a 2.7 knots. Stellar, isn't it? Yeah. Now, according to the pilotage, <laughs> we should be having tide with us. For at least another hour. Um, but um, we're closer to the Classic Bay side rather than the Jura side. But we have definitely got a foul tide. Not much of a foul tide, I grant you. But still, we should be going faster than this uh, with this sail configuration and wind. So um, just be aware that when you're looking at tidal graphs and stuff like that, they can only give you so much information and um, there can be different sets on different sides of the lock like for instance it might be okay on the Jura side but because we're on the Carsick Bay side it did say in the pilotage that it's set early so I'm assuming that it's slightly earlier so obviously the tide would be going again so that sets a little bit earlier on that side so you just got to do best you can but the main thing is we're sailing and uh, what we've decided to do is foul tide be damned we'll just sail through the day because my issue last night was the fact that i was worried about time um and various other things um you know and getting in in a reasonable time because there was Carsick bay and then after that because the the wind direction was supposed to be coming from the south there was only one anchorage that at the McCormack Isles that I could have gone to but I just wasn't it was quite a little small snug one so I just went for Carsick Bay because uh, it looked a slightly more had more space say <sighs> anyway we're at least sailing and we are. you've got to love that Uh, 
hotel we were. Going at a nice little sedate pace. Now we've got no wind at all. Beverly sometimes thinks it's like uh, IT, because Beverly used to be in IT, <coughs> so did I. Sometimes you just have to wait, wait, and wait a bit longer. Are oh, you fed up waiting? <laughs> wait a longer again. Yeah. Well, there's a line in the water there, and it's closer to us. I'm hoping that's more wind coming in. Oh, I see the line in the water. Yeah, so it's just a case of the fact that we're just waiting. But we were only doing a couple of knots, weren't we, Bev? We were, but now we're doing half a knot. <laughs> <sighs> well, I'm glad to report that the line in the water was definitely wind, because we're back sailing! Yahoo! The only problem was, um, just before the wind arrived, you know, the um, Genoa was luffing, so we basically put that away. The line ar arrived, <laughs> and, the the gen back out. and the Genoa is back out. <laughs> it was like in out. Sometimes our Genoa is the hokey cokey sail. Uh, well, oh, we've just dropped the anchor. Um, we've just committed to the anchorage. <laughs> Uh, we're in about five metres of depth here and we've dropped the thing on about a five or six to one scope. Uh, we're in Lag Bay. You can see why they say it's not a brilliant anchorage. It's, it's small, there's not much protection, but the tide's going north, which is going past here. So we're out of the tide. The wind is being broken by the hills in front of us, which it's funneling over them a bit, but it's better than getting it square in the face, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the plan at the moment is to actually have a lunchtime anchorage. Yeah, so we're going to have a break here and we're going to sit here for five or six hours and wait for the tide to turn the other way because in the Sound of Jira, there's not really much point in fighting the tide unless you're a masochist.